<laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so as, as some of you know me, and, and uh, those of you who have heard the story, I hope I'll be able to make it as entertaining as I have in the past. And those who haven't yet, I'll be happy to introduce myself. I'm, as uh, you've all heard, a Jew. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if there's anybody in Texas in this room who's never met a Jew before. Certainly as an Orthodox Jew, that might be something that's a little bit new for, you, for some of you. And that's my, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to uh, get to know you and be friends with you. I was actually born in New York, not such a, uh, uh, an Orthodox observant Jew. That was the way it was back then. This is not going to work. <laughs> How's that? A little bit better? Yeah. And uh, when I was in fifth, gr up until fifth grade, my, I was in an Orthodox day school uh, where all of us uh, Orthodox or semi-Orthodox Jews in the neighborhood would go to school. And uh, even though we weren't so observant, that was the way it was back then. But my parents, probably because of uh, financial reasons, took me out of that Jewish school and put me into a public school. Now... We were in New York, so even in the public school, everybody was Jewish. But uh, <laughs> even, even still, I felt that I had been, I wouldn't say robbed, but uh, it was my Jewish identity was pulled away from me. And, and sort of like, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Back then in fifth grade, I decided that I wanted to spend more time focusing on my Jewish identity, uh, on that, that gift of being a Jew. Uh, you know, what did I already know? I barely knew how to write and read in fifth grade. But uh, that was enough for me when I got back into sixth grade in that Jewish school. My parents uh, decided that they weren't going to put me through another year of not being where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky in that year to be introduced to a uh, Jewish Zionist youth movement called Bnei Akiva. That youth movement brought children from the United States and, in fact, all over the world into the values of the state of Israel, the land of Israel, the people of Israel, the Torah of Israel, and, of course, the God of Israel. So when you've got such a lineup and you recognize that the word Israel means Jewish, then you say, wow, this is something pretty exciting for me. And that made me so excited that for the next three years I was spending more time in the, in the youth movement clubhouse than in my own home. And uh, in ninth grade, I transferred to a Jewish high school that wasn't so good. My parents asked me, uh, well, let's sit down and decide where you're going to spend 10th grade. And they surprised me by saying, would you like to go to Israel? Now, I've never been to Israel, but I jumped at the chance because this is really what I'd been thinking about so much for the past for the previous three years, and it was a dream come true. How many people here have been to Israel? Ah, almost everybody. That's great. Well, how many people want to go back to Israel? <laughs> so there you go. It is truly a, an amazing place. The people are just so nice, and the idea of living in a place that is truly prophecy realized is something that I was just amazed to be part of so ever since then. After high school, I joined the army. What do you got to do with all this ice in your order? You <laughs> <laughs> want a sip. <laughs> Figured I'd better, that would be better than spitting it back in. Anyway. <laughs> Um, after uh, uh, being in the army, I had, a, I had a, a few days off, a furlough, and I was walking in the streets of Jerusalem, and uh, I saw across the street an apartment with a sign on it. So I naturally crossed the street in order to read the sign better. That's my hobby, you know, reading the street signs of Jerusalem. You can get a degree in Jewish history just by reading those street signs. And that sign said ICEJ, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. Now, I had never heard of such a thing. As far as I was concerned, Christians were the other. But, check it. <laughs> but uh, when I, I think we've had enough of this, don't you? <laughs> I walked into that apartment and that uh, small office, started picking up brochures, and I realized that these were Christians who loved Israel. Christians who felt an affinity and wanted to be friends with Jews, not in order to kill them 
God forbid, as had been so many times the case in the relationship between Christians and Jews throughout the centuries, not in order to turn then into Christians, but to recognize that you are you and I am me and we want there to be a relationship between us, a relationship based on friendship. Now, I didn't learn too much in kindergarten, but that was one of the things that I learned. If somebody extends their hand in friendship to you, you grasp onto that hand and you be their friend. And so little by little, I learned more about that organization, other organizations based in Jerusalem, like Bridges for Peace or Christian Friends of Israel. And I realized that this is what I wanted to do. I'd been working in high tech, but I left that. Luckily, my wife is still in high tech, so we've got some food on the table. <laughs> but I realized that I wanted to make more and more friends with the people who wanted to be friends with me. And that is why I was blessed to meet with Bob and to come up with this idea of root source. Root source, as it was and has been for the past four years, is a platform for Israeli Orthodox Jews to teach the Judaism and the, the Hebrew and the Bible and the authentic thoughts that we have been learning ourselves as a part of the chain for over 2,000 years, perhaps even you could say for over 4,000 years ever since Sinai, to people, Christians, who are interested in learning that stuff from us. Now, I'm sure many people in this room have heard of, for example, H.com or the Jerusalem Post.com. These are Israeli or Jewish sites that are mostly focused on Jews, trying to bring Jews closer to their Jewish heritage. But lo and behold, people will realize, look at this. These are, uh, if I look at my stats, about 50% or maybe even 70% of my visitors are coming from Nebraska and Utah and Texas. I don't think that there are many Jews over there. And I think that that's what's going on. There's a thirst by Christians to learn more about the Jewish roots of their faith. And for two, two things I realized. First of all, I want to respect people for what they are. I don't want to look at somebody and say, ah, I see who you are. I love you. That means I want to change you. Has any, anybody ever been on a first date and that's what the date told them? I think I want to change you. That's what my marriage is going to be with you. Guess what? That's the last date also. You got to respect people for what they are. That's what I, that's simple ABCs as far as I was concerned. And I realized that my goal, my vision, is not to have more Jews in the world. And that, of course, is, uh, is traditional Jewry, is not a proselytizing relationship. But I realized that I want to help Christians be more Christian. Because a, a good Christian knows his Bible, and a Bible-believing and knowing Christian loves Israel. That's what I've seen from all of my friends. And so that is what I have been doing Finding Christians, now I have to admit, it seems to me for, from what I'm reading in the, in the papers that y'all are barely 1% of Christendom. That there's still a lot of Christians who don't recognize this, who are just going through the motions and haven't read the Bible where it says that your people are my people, where it says that you should love the Lord your God, where you should really uh, be, uh, bless Israel because you will be blessed, Genesis 12.3. There's barely a page on the Bible that doesn't talk about this kind of stuff. But what can you do? Not everybody is into it. Of course, not everybody has gotten rid of that extra baggage of thousands of years either. But thankfully, I have been born in a generation that people are into this kind of stuff. That I don't have to work too hard to find people who get it. And I think that people who, Christians like yourself who get this, want more of it. And so I am blessed that I've got about a dozen teachers on root source, each one of them uh, a traditional teacher who has been used to teaching about Torah, but to Jewish people. And I said, all you gotta do is just teach and see what happens. And thank God we've got some of the best teachers that I, that I know on our website. And our goal now, our dream, is to bring many, many, many more. Bob spoke about one Jew to 10 Christians. Well, <laughs> we're going to need a lot more Jews if we're going to get anywhere near one Jew to ten Christians. Already we have over 50,000 people on our newsletter. We're, we're looking forward to getting many, many more. 
I've got, so I'm starting building relationships with people uh, in, in different languages, Chinese, African languages, Spanish, French, you name it. I want to be able to translate our content into those languages to reach more and more people. I want to bring more people on, uh, I want to bring a, uh, a marketing executive on board who will be able to reach more of these Christians. And I certainly want to bring more and more Jews on, to, on board to bring them into this circle of Jewish-Christian friendship. And the most important thing that I have to do, some of you have been members of Root Source for many, many years, and I'm very appreciative of this. And what we're trying to do now is switch Root Source from a payment subscription-based model to a freely you sh have get gotten, freely you shall give, something like that. <laughs> I don't know, you guys know that stuff better than me. <laughs> There's a piece of ice again. We're looking forward to turning Root Source into a free access a resource. And uh, we're looking for people who will join us in supporting Root Source in order to be able to reach those not tens of thousands of people, but hundreds and thousands of thousands of people. Because I think that that's what we're up to in this day and age. If we just get the uh, really off the shelf technology, we can reach these people. But we can only do it with your help, really. And your help, meaning that if you are a friend of somebody, you want to help them in any way that you can. And I think that that is something that we're going to be able to do with your help over the next year or two. And I'm very, very pleased and, and blessed that I have so many old friends in this room, many more who couldn't make it this morning, and so many new friends in this room, and friends of these friends that I'm looking forward to being in touch with you.